Hey guys, so as promised, today we are doing a history of the Eagle brand and also the American Motors Corporation, or AMC, because that had a lot to do with the formation of Eagle. Eagle was a brand under Chrysler for roughly 10 years, and the brand ended up having 8 different vehicles and one concept car. I thought it would be cool to take a look back in history and tell the story of both AMC and Eagle. So today we'll start by going over the AMC brand from 1954 to 1987, and then we'll look at the story of Eagle and how they came to be, and why they got cancelled from 1988 to 1998, and then we'll end by briefly looking at the different cars in the Eagle lineup. I plan to make this a two or three part series because I want to have a whole video dedicated to looking at all the Eagle models and specs very in depth, but today is just going to be an overview of those models, and putting together both of those in one video would have been well over 20 or 25 minutes, so that's too long. So let me know in the comments if you do want me to drop that part too soon. So let's begin with a bit of history on American Motors Corporation, or AMC for short, which was formed in 1954 and merged with Chrysler by 1987. AMC was a small company that had to try to compete with the big three corporations, Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors, with a much smaller budget and less resources, and thus they were basically a smaller fish in a much bigger lake. AMC was the result of a merger between Nash Calvinator Corporation and Hudson Motor Car Company on May 1st, 1954, and that was the largest corporate merger the US had ever seen at the time, with the deal being worth close to $200 million. The longer term plan was to consolidate Nash, Hudson, Studebaker, and Packard brands into one single company. And the major reasons for the merger was to combine resources to tackle the big players on the American market, which at the time were the big three as we've went over. And by 1957, the Nash and Hudson brands became phased out and replaced by other brands called Rambler and Metropolitan. Also in 1957, Roy Abernethy was named to be the Vice President of Sales for AMC, and under his guidance, sales began to rise, and Rambler was actually the third most popular vehicle in the US, only behind Ford and Chevy. Abernethy became the CEO in 1962, and changed focus from selling compact and economy cars to larger cars, where AMC could make more profits, such as the Ambassador models. This worked very well at first, as sales went from around 18,000 in 1964 to 71,000 by 1966. But unfortunately, developing vehicles like the Ambassador proved to be a huge cost for AMC, and the company's working capital, which is the difference between the current assets and current liabilities, began to fall, negatively impacting their liquidity and short-term financial health. And as a result, sales began to fall and the company actually reported a loss of $4.2 million in 1966, even though they had sales of $479 million. And the next year was more of the same, as they reported a loss of over $12.6 million. After that rough period, the older executives like Abernethy resigned and younger ones moved in, cutting costs and prices and introducing more muscular vehicles like the Javelin and AMX. In 1970, AMC bought out Jeep to add that to their existing line of cars, which was a significant move for their future. In the 1970s, AMC moved back towards compact cars, releasing the Hornet platform, which included the Hornet, Gremlin, Spirit, and Concorde. They also released the Matador, Pacer, and four-wheel drive AMC Eagle, which was technically a crossover, but the first two had to be cut by the end of the 1970s due to financial difficulties and poor sales. In the 1980s, AMC partnered with the Renault brand from France to get more cash, and Renault took a controlling interest, so AMC produced their vehicles such as the Alliance and Encore, and AMC now focused solely on all-wheel drive cars. In 1985, AMC had extra manufacturing capacity and Chrysler stepped in, entering a contract to produce Dodge Diplomats and Omnis and Plymouth Furies and Horizons in AMC's factories. Renault would sell their ownership in AMC to Chrysler, and Chrysler purchased the rest of the shares on the New York Stock Exchange, so Chrysler basically bought out AMC in 1987. All in all, this deal was worth $1.5 billion US, and AMC became the Jeep Eagle division of Chrysler, fully merged into Chrysler by March 29 of 1990. This was a good time to purchase AMC for Chrysler, since AMC's financials had been drastically improving, and they actually had positive profits. One of the major things that Chrysler, and their CEO at the time, Lee Iacocca, really had wanted from AMC was their ZJ Jeep Grand Cherokee, as opposed to all the other random mix of cars that AMC had. And obviously, that ended up being a fantastic acquisition that is still making Chrysler a ton of money to this day. Chrysler also got a brand new plant in Bramalee, Ontario, the AMC management talent, and the AMC dealer network out of the deal as well. 
So now we shift over to looking at Eagle, who as we mentioned, was a brand of Chrysler after they purchased AMC in 1987. The Eagle brand was discontinued by 1998, and it was fully defunct on July 4th of 1999. And it's also worth noting that the AMC brand totally disappeared after the Chrysler acquisition. The Eagle brand was an interesting one, never really selling their own cars. All of the Eagle cars, which we'll go into later on in this video, were from other places and rebadged. So essentially the Eagle lineup was made up of cars from three different continents and four brands, Chrysler, AMC, Renault, and Mitsubishi. There weren't actually official Eagle cars like you'd normally see from other brands, just cars from those four brands rebadged as Eagles and sold under one roof. So Eagle can be seen as, quote, a line of cars that Chrysler inherited from AMC, end quote. So moving on, after General Motors introduced their Saturn brand, Lee Iacocca wanted something to compete with them, and that ended up being the Eagle brand. As we've been over, the AMC purchase was mostly to acquire the Jeep lines, since they were selling so strong. However, Chrysler didn't exactly know what to do with the odd mix of AMC cars that had been developed with Renault, and that's where Eagle comes in. Chrysler decided to make Eagle a whole new brand to sell all the AMC cars, and they named it after the last car that AMC had fully designed themselves, the AMC Eagle 4x4. The other big three manufacturers had multiple brands under the big corporate name, but Chrysler didn't, and all the cars they inherited were sold under the American Motors brand previously. There were also contractual obligations with Renault as part of the deal, where Chrysler had to take on some of the passenger car models from Renault and sell those instead of just scrapping them and focusing on Jeep. So it made the most sense for Chrysler to sell all those cars as Eagle instead of trying to make them all into Chryslers and selling them in the existing Chrysler dealerships and possibly ruining their brand and tarnishing their reputation. So once Eagle came to fruition, Chrysler discontinued some of the Renault vehicles like the Alliance and Encore. And the first vehicle to be produced was the 1988 Eagle Wagon, which was just a rebadged AMC Eagle crossover. And we'll go over the rest of the Eagle lineup in a few minutes. With less vehicles to produce, Chrysler had more production capacity in their Brampton plant, and that meant more space to make Jeeps. As for marketing, all of the Eagle cars had their own logo, an Eagle head, instead of the Pentastar logo found on the Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler vehicles. When introducing Eagle, Chrysler officials said that they wanted to market the Eagle brand to drivers that were more financially wealthy than those who had bought AMC models. Bennett E. Bidwell, the vice chairman of Chrysler at the time, talked about the Eagle and Jeep brands. He said that Chrysler would make few changes in the Jeep lineup because of its strong sales in recent years, and that they wanted to establish the Eagle brand among well-off consumers. And the reasoning for this was to change things up from what AMC had done, because cheaper economy cars that they were selling did not mix well with the more expensive vehicles like the Jeeps. Statistics showed that those who purchased the various Jeep models, such as the Grand Wagoneer, had the highest average income of any American vehicles purchased, and these owners often had other Mercedes, Audis, and other premium import vehicles in their garages, as opposed to other American vehicles. So Chrysler wanted to create a vehicle that those wealthier Jeep owners wanted to buy alongside their Jeeps. So Eagle was supposed to try to capture the import buyers, or at least that's what Chrysler had wanted to happen. Eagle had slow sales through the 1990s, and in September of 1997, Chrysler announced that they would be discontinuing the Eagle brand. In 1997, the Eagle Vision was discontinued, leaving the Talon to be the only car left in the Eagle lineup in 1998, and then the brand was gone. So now let's take a look at some of the reasons for the failure. Eagle was never very successful, and I don't think the brand was handled well by Chrysler. First off, many customers were confused by the Eagle brand, since it had no real Eagle products to be known by, as I mentioned earlier. Eagle was hard for customers to figure out since they had such an odd mix of vehicles, from leftover AMCs to Renault rebadged cars to the American versions of Mitsubishi models and even rebadged versions of Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler. The same vehicle was basically being sold in different dealerships under different badges. If you were a customer buying a new car, you'd choose the Dodge or Plymouth that were simply better known and around for longer, even if it was a very similar vehicle to the Eagles. Chrysler had some financial difficulty in the 1980s, so Eagle wasn't their major concern. Jeep was also very profitable, so it made sense that Chrysler wanted to put the most of their marketing resources for the Jeep products since they were making the company tons of money. And this attitude continued in the Jeep Eagle dealerships, who wanted to focus on selling Jeeps and didn't care that much about Eagle vehicles, which had far lower profit margins. Some dealers even said that Eagle was simply, quote, a distraction to the Jeep selling business, end quote. The Eagle brand also had absolutely no reputation in the automotive industry, and no one really knew what they were all about, and Chrysler made little effort to get the Eagle name more well known. 
For example, Eagle never even got their own flagship vehicle that was unique to that brand only. I found a good quote that sums it up well. Quote, Chrysler wasn't fully committed to the nameplate and also left consumers confused about what an Eagle was, if they knew the name at all. End quote. The third reason for failure is that the Eagle sales got cannibalized by Chrysler and Dodge vehicles. When Chrysler took over AMC, there was a realignment of the dealership network, so some AMC and Jeep dealers were consolidated with existing Chrysler and Plymouth dealers. And these dealers were very happy to take the Jeeps, since Chrysler didn't really have any SUVs, but the consolidation meant that the Eagle cars had to compete with very similar vehicles from Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth. And Chrysler had tried to get the Eagle to compete with the import brands like we went over, but in reality, all it did was compete against Chrysler and Dodge and lose big time. So now let's take a quick look at some of the Eagle vehicles in the lineup. Again, this is just a breeze through of the models, and in part two, I'm going to go in depth for each model, looking at the specs, features, prices, engines, and more. So the first Eagle was the Eagle Wagon, around for just 1988. This was just a continuation of the AMC Eagle, which had been released in 1980. The only engine available was a 4.2 liter inline 6 engine with 110 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque, and your choice of a 5 speed manual or 3 speed auto. And for the one model year, there was just 2,306 of these produced. Next is the Eagle Medallion around for 1988 and 1989. This was a rebadged version of the French Renault 21, sharing the same platform and it had to be sold because of the contract with Renault. It was a front wheel drive vehicle that was offered in sedan and wagon, and any medallion came with just one engine choice, a 2.2 liter overhead cam in line 4, with 103 horsepower and either a 5 speed manual or 3 speed auto. The Eagle Premier lasted from 1988 to 1992, and this was a full size executive car. This was developed by AMC and Renault, and also existed as an AMC Premier, and later became a Dodge Monaco. The lower level LX had a 2.5 liter AMC 4 cylinder with 111 horsepower and 142 pound feet of torque, while the ES had a 3 liter V6 that pumped out 150 horsepower and 171 pound feet of torque. The ES model could do 0 to 60 in 10.4 seconds and the quarter mile in 17.5 seconds. Both engines were paired with a 4 speed automatic transmission. The Premier sold decently, hitting 140,000 over the 5 model years, with most of those coming early on, but that wasn't enough to meet the original target of 260,000. The Eagle Vista was around from 1988 to 1992, and this was a subcompact car available in hatchback and sedan form in Canada only. The Vista was basically a rebadged version of the Mitsubishi Mirage and the Dodge and Plymouth Colt. Either model had two engine options, a 1.5 liter straight 4 cylinder with 69 horsepower or a 1.6 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder with 106 horsepower. And there was also a station wagon available with a 2 liter inline 4. This car was discontinued in 1992 to be replaced by the Eagle Summit Wagon. The Eagle Summit, around from 1989 to 1996, was another subcompact sedan produced by Mitsubishi, again basically a rebadged version of the Mirage, and also the Colt. For the first gen 1989 to 1992, the base engine was a 1.5 liter 4 cylinder with 81 horsepower, and there was an optional 1.6 liter with 123 horsepower. It started as a sedan, and a two door hatchback was introduced in 1991. There were a variety of transmissions, so a 4 speed manual and 3 speed auto on the hatch and a 5-speed manual and 4-speed auto on the sedans. The second gen from 1993 to 1996 got totally new models with more room and less weight based on the 4th gen Mirage and a new 1.8 liter engine was offered with 113 horsepower. The Eagle Talon had a longer lifespan from 1990 to 1998, and this was the best-selling Eagle car by far, with just under 200,000 vehicles sold over the nine model years. The Talon was a two-door hatchback coupe that came in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive variations. This vehicle could also be found rebadged as the Plymouth Laser and the Mitsubishi Eclipse. All three of these vehicles were the exact same mechanically, but they would have different visuals like colors, wheels, bumpers, and spoilers. The first gen Talon was around from 1990 to 1994. The standard models had a 2 liter 135 horsepower Mitsubishi engine, and the turbo models, including all wheel drive, added an intercooled Mitsubishi turbocharger with 11 psi of boost, making 190 horsepower on front wheel drive models or 195 on the all wheel drives. 
the first gen sold 144,980 units over the five model years. The second gen was from 1995 to 1998, and this time around the Talon looked a lot different visually than the Eclipse, while the Plymouth Laser got cancelled. As for the engine, there was an increase in horsepower from a redesigned intake and exhaust, higher compression pistons, and a new T25 Garrett turbocharger with 12 PSI peak boost. The base model had a 2 liter 140 horsepower engine, while the all wheel drive turbo versions had a far more powerful engine with between 205 to 210 horsepower, depending on the transmission choice. The second gen sold just 54,262 over the four model years and was cancelled. The Talon was easily the best performing and fastest Eagle vehicle ever produced, as you'll see on screen. The 2000 GTX was just a rebadged Mitsubishi Gallant, sold only in Canada for two years. Mitsubishi didn't have an official presence in Canada, so the Gallant was badged as an Eagle and a Dodge 2000 GTX for Canadians. The 2000 stood for the displacement of the 2 liter engine, which had 135 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time in 8.2 seconds. There was also a 2 liter version with 103 horsepower and a slower 9.8 second 0 to 60 time. Canada never got the turbocharged model that was available in the United States. The Eagle Vision was a full-size sedan and front-wheel drive that replaced the Eagle Premier. This was the only Eagle model out of these eight to be fully designed and built by Chrysler, and was part of the LH platform that included the Chrysler Concorde, New Yorker, LHS, and Dodge Intrepid. The lower models had a 3.3 liter V6, with between 153 to 162 horsepower and 194 to 203 pound-feet of torque. With this engine, the Vision could do 0 to 60 in 10.4 seconds and the quarter mile in 17.5 seconds. The top model came with a 3.5 liter V6 with 214 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque, and with that engine, the Vision could do 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds and the quarter mile in 16.3 seconds. The Vision sold only 105,000 units over the five model years, and a big reason for that was that the Dodge Intrepid took most of the sales. The final car I want to look at is the Eagle Optima concept car, which was a four door sedan with a cab forward design that came with a V8 engine and all wheel drive. So that's the end of this long video. It was my first time doing a video on the history of a brand like this, so hopefully you enjoyed going through everything and looking at all the Eagle vehicles. Let me know about your experiences with AMC and Eagle, and if you owned any of these cars that we went over, and also let me know if you do want to see that part 2 with a more in depth look at each vehicle. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.